To visit all elements in a 2D array, you want to loop over the rows and columns. Let's first loop over the rows. So we'll have a row index i that assumes the values 0, 1, and 2 in this example. Similarly, we'll have a column index j that in this example will go from 0 to 1. If you had more columns, of course, it would go further. When you have a row and column index, then we can access the element at the ith row and the jth column. So what you see over here is the general expression for an element at an arbitrary row and arbitrary column. In this case, we just print it, and we use printf so that the printout lines up nicely. So we would now print this element, and then print that element, and that would finish the inner loop. Then the outer loop would pick the next row. We print these two, and then the outer loop picks the last row, and we print those two. Now, of course, we want the numbers to line up nicely, so after printing each row, we want to print a new line. Notice that this statement is contained in the outer loop because it happens once per row, but it's not in the inner loop because we don't want a new line after every of the elements. Now let's look at the missing bounds here. Of course, in this simple example, I could just say i should be less than 3, j should be less than 2, but in general, someone might just hand you a two-dimensional array and you should ask it how big it is. Just like with a one-dimensional array, you just use the length field to find out how big an array is. You can get the number of rows from a two-dimensional array by asking it array name dot length. And the reason for this is that a two-dimensional array is actually an array of one-dimensional arrays. So prices, which looks like this nice tabular arrangement, really is an array of three arrays, one for each row. And so the number of rows is given by that length. Now we need to look at how many columns we have. Here you have a row, and the length of that row is the number of columns. So in general, you should simply remember that for any two-dimensional array, you get the number of rows with this expression, the number of columns with that expression. Now let's move on to doing something more interesting with two-dimensional arrays than gas prices.